Welcome to the Joyous Kingdom. Is Cage your guide? I'll be replacing the voice inside your head for now, giving you a break from the constant internal monologue that is the human mind. I want to say first, thanks for listening or viewing whatever platform you're on. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, drop a like in this video. Um, I appreciate all of you being here. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, follow me in all the places. Um, today, we're just going to fucking do one of those interviews with myself, a uh, recap on life, how I've been feeling, and then see what other stuff comes out of my head as I start to ramble. Guys, my podcast is the one that starts off really good, but always, always ends off better than I started. So I encourage you, if you're going to watch this at all, to finish it because chances are at the end, I'm going to find some realization about myself and you're, I'm just going to be like, holy shit. And then you're going to be listening. You're going to be like, holy shit. And so I encourage you to watch to the end of this video. These are these are my personal branding videos. These are the ones that if you care about me, if you like me or whatever, these are the videos that are going to bring you the most value because it's going to be me getting you know vulnerable and talking about shit that I don't talk about my YouTube videos. I'm also going to throw in some AMA questions, like questions I've been avoiding, like more questions that I've just seen and just haven't answered really. So I'm going to answer a couple of those um, as we get into this, uh, into this podcast. So I have some notes here from earlier this month. Uh, I try to do these like once a month. I don't want to do them too often because um, I want to make sure I give myself ample time to sort of sort through my thoughts and stuff like that. Um, but one of the things I noticed that I've kind of, I've definitely addressed and uh, actually, you know what, before we even get into that, one thing I've really want to pat myself on the back of is uh, my ability to kind of be patient with myself. That's something I never could do. That's the this is the first time this year, and it started with my trip when I was living in my car, traveling the world. If you were following me at that point, all the videos are from the summer, uh, 2021. But I, uh, I would want, I would notice something about like my morning routine or like whatever that I didn't like, and I would want to change it. You know, maybe it's I want to get up at seven instead of nine, uh, and it wouldn't happen. You know, I would try and wake up at seven the next day, it wouldn't happen. I'd sleep until ten, and I'd be pissed, and and I'd be like, I'm never gonna get there. Like it's not even worth it. And something I've noticed recently when I want to make a change is I notice it and I don't give myself like an ultimatum, like, hey, you better change this right now. We need to change this right now. It's one of those things like, hey, you noticed it. Day two is like, hey, you noticed it two minutes earlier than yesterday. Good job. And then next it's like, okay, like, let's start thinking of things we could do to make it a little bit easier to make this transition. And then, you know, like for me, a lot of changes I've noticed, I'm implementing like day by day, just just by being becoming more aware and uh, being a little bit more a little bit more intentional, like subconsciously, and you know, I'll notice like two or three weeks later that I'm like 75 percent, you know, like closer to my goal than I was, and I kind of just built up to it. and It wasn't that hard. Um, for example, with waking up early, like it's really like I get out of my routine all the time because if I travel, I'm all fucked up. If I have one you know off day on sleeping, I'm all fucked up, and. One way I always end up finding myself coming back to is instead of, you know, waking up at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock and be like, okay, tomorrow I wake up at 630 is I'll just be like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to wake up at 945 instead of 10. And I'm going to make sure I'm out of my bed by 945, no matter what. And then tomorrow it's 930 between 930 and 945. And then the next day it's like, okay, let's, let's try and get up anywhere in between nine o'clock and 10 o'clock. And I kind of just get used to that for a week. And then it becomes easier. I'm like, okay, wake up at nine is not so bad. Let's try 845. And you know, over time, that's how it happens. But anyways... Um, one thing I noticed was I was 
not watching videos on YouTube. Like I've always been an avid YouTube watcher. I love YouTube. I still love YouTube. But for like two months there, I got so busy and I got so caught up in my own world of like, holy shit, I have my own brand. I have my own thing I need to work on. I'm 24 seven, go, 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 go. That I didn't really watch anyone. I stopped watching crypto channels. I stopped watching news channels. I stopped watching market updates. I stopped watching the people that literally built me. And uh, a while in, I was like, dude, I'm fucking an idiot. This is so stupid. I, I can't hope to cover everything on my own. You know, I need help from other people. And who am I to think that I could cover the entire crypto market and the entire NFT market on my fucking own? It's literally impossible. At this rate that I'm pr producing videos, I can't hope to cover all that. I have to be able to be kept in the know and just watch videos passively like I used to. I would go on drives like DoorDashing when I was working and I would spend that time watching Elliot Trades, re-watching Alex Becker videos, watching uh, Benjamin Cohen, like learning about technical analysis and learning how markets work and watching Gary Vee and learning about how to uh, test or how to like learn how to... And like learning how to read the market and emotions and like predict trends and stuff like that. And I didn't do that for a while. And I started to notice that um, I was starting to become a little bit disconnected. And I wasn't I wasn't actually like in the dirty work, like down in the trenches like I used to be. And it was starting to affect the quality of my videos, I thought. And so I made a decision that I was like, you know, I was about to start hiring someone to do the work for me. And I was like, you know what, dude, what the fuck? Like the whole point of this is so I could be that different YouTuber who is down in there doing the dirty work and just bringing back the raw truth. And so I was like, no, you know, I'm going to decide to pay more attention to the market and watch Benjamin Cohen's videos on Bitcoin and make sure I'm aware of what's going on. And what are the, what are the big crypto channels thinking? What is the general sentiment in the market? You know, and it is immense, immensely has helped my just broad knowledge of what's going on. So it allows me to help people if I'm consulting, if I'm doing, you know, working with someone or working with a client or working with a team like with Ugoverse, um, then, you know, it's good to be in the know. It, it only helps me. And it doesn't take that much time. I just go on, on Twitter a few days and just make sure I'm aware. It's free content if I'm aware of something like the Open DAO token. Only because I was aware, I was able to go live 30 minutes after it happened, cover a video and got 4x the amount of views I normally do, you know, and I started to pay attention to the markets to catch trending news and cover it. Because I was like, yo, I can be that guy. That's the goal. I want to be the NFT guy. When anyone thinks NFT YouTuber, me. That's what I want, right? So I want to be the face of the NFT movement. And because the reason for that is because like if NFTs are going to take over everything and be the the everything and i'm the biggest guy in everything then i have conversations with mark zuckerberg you know conversations with elon musk lex fridman joe rogan people that i've watched for years now become co-workers or something at that point you know like we're all like something i noticed the other day um was <laughs> i clickbaited with a pic with a picture of jake paul a while back and i was like wow this is weird because this is like a legit youtube video that is going to get seen and i'm using this because it'll actually get clicks and I used to watch this guy on YouTube. What the fuck? And he was like some famous dude on the internet. And now I'm like using him in a re like in the same industry, but like for real. And I was like, what the hell? And it's so strange. And it's exciting because this podcast, I've talked to some people I never thought I would talk to. And it's opened up doors that I never thought uh, would be opened. And conversations with big, big people in the tech space are things I'm preparing for mentally now. You know, when I, when I go into a, into an interview or a podcast with someone who is a bit out of my league now, I look at it like a challenge. Like, what can I take from this and how can I apply this to my arsenal of experience to one day help me and aid me in an interview when Elon Musk comes knocking or something like that, you know? But yeah, I'm glad I noticed that because uh, another thing I noticed is certain people that I watch that are killing it right now that I feel like... Um, you know how when people say you're the universe, you're the ocean, or you're the wave, and the everything else is the ocean, whatever it is. Um, we move as everything else moves, and we're the universe experiencing it from the human uh, perspective kind of thing. And so there are certain people I watch that I think are on the same vibration as me, working on the same stuff, you know, or whatever. Uh, so Logan Paul is one of those people that I kind of look for to be like a trendsetter for myself. So if I start to notice something in Logan Paul's attitude or like, for example, I noticed that he was doing a lot of like money focused stuff and a little, a, some of it, him and his brother were like very short term focused and you know, they're going hard. They're seeing so much success because they're so rich and famous already. Um, and then he got scammed and lost like $4 million or something. And, uh, and he was like a huge setback for him. And I remember just being like, is that where I'm headed? Am I starting to think too short term because I'm at 4,000 subscribers? I've got, you know, two to 10 emails a day for collaborations right now. I'm turning 90% of them away. And am I getting drunk on my own shit? Am I taking 
offers that I shouldn't be when blah, blah, blah. And I'm like starting to overthink. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I am. Like maybe I need to realign and be like, why did I start this channel? And then I think back to all the comments, like the, even the new comments, they still come up every day. It's like, yo, appreciate the angle you bring in. Appreciate the no bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Um, I like that you're not annoying and chilly. And there's been multiple times the last two months where I've been like, God damn, why don't I just start making some fucking chilly, annoying videos? Like they get like the other, like I remember a few months ago, I said, um, it'd be stupid to make chilly videos because I'll just be white noise. But the truth is, there's so many people watching NFT stuff that like I would be I would be at twenty or thirty thousand subscribers right now. Realistically, like for real, I would be at thirty thousand subscribers right now if I was making annoying shilly NFT content that is all clickbait focused. Um, but like to me, I, I still maintain that I don't want that audience. I don't want all moon boys. I want people like Benjamin Cohen. I want people like Gary Vee. I want people like Lex Fridman, whose audience in the comments section is not a bunch of idiots screaming moon you know i want people to have intelligent conversations like there's multiple people you guys know who you are like you're probably a voyager who uh you have intelligent conversations in the discord and you help people and you're good people and uh you know that's one of the qualities i look for when i'm picking out my voyagers but um yeah dude i don't even know where i was going with that And kind of going along with this whole pattern of me questioning stuff is just like, there's so many life changes happening right now. There's so many things that are unstable currently, like everything in my life right now, every, literally everything is unstable. There's no, I mean, I'm literally in limbo. I've been in limbo. It feels like for like three years, but I'm so close to out of limbo that I'm like in pain right now. I'm literally like physically in pain every day. I'm like, I'm so close. I'm just like not there yet. I'm like, I'm like in the last quarter of the last lap on a race. You know, I'm just like, dying at this point i'm like bro just fucking like can i just relax you know and i'm like i'm so close i'm like i'm almost there it's gonna push and man I, there's been a few days where i'm walking around and i'm like bro this is fucking hard what the fuck it should not be this hard you know and i thought about that for a couple weeks and i was thinking with that same attitude like this shit is fucking hard there's so much work there's no way i'm doing this right it shouldn't be this hard i shouldn't be allotting this many hours to youtube it should not take this long it should not be this hard and then I was like, wait, what? No, dude, it, it is that hard. That's why nobody is a YouTuber. That's why YouTube is the number one dream job for all people literally under the age of 25 or 30. Everyone wants to be a YouTuber. It is the, without a doubt, the hardest thing ever. It's, it's so fucking hard. Entertainment, capturing people's attention, capturing people's attention is the hardest thing you could do right? And I'm in an industry that is cutthroat for entertainment and attention. It's an attention whore industry, right? And I'm attempting to go against the grain and do content that is not geared toward that and still win. And I'm complaining that's hard. And I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, this, okay. That makes sense. It, it is supposed to be the hardest thing ever. It makes sense that I'm struggling right now, that I don't have a lid in anything, that I'm barely making ends meet, blah, blah, blah. And it's difficult, fam. It's really fucking <laughs> hard. And, and I think I just like I didn't accept that for a while. And then I was on a walk one day and just hit me, you know? Yeah, so I'm sure microdosing shrooms for the last couple of months has definitely helped me work through some of these things, but. I saw, I think I saw this on a podcast, someone who said entrepreneur is someone who deals with uncertainty. It's hard, but they love it. Secretly, this is the way to creating your, uh, to creating your own path, paving your own path. It's hard. It's supposed to be hard. Um, also, Gary Vee said today, he said, uh, an entre a true entrepreneur is someone who can't, who can't fathom the idea of not working on their own shit. You know, and that's been me. Like my whole life, I've been like, dude, what am I going to do? I can't hold a job for more than one year. I hate working at jobs. Even if I vibe with everything, I can't work a job. I can't hold a job. What the hell? What am I going to do? And that's when like this YouTube thing picked up. I was like, this is it going balls. I'm, I'm all in. This is it. This is, this is the only thing I can do. This is the only thing that I can allot 15 to 18 hours. It li literally, it feels like that many hours a day. Cause I feel like I'm sleeping like f five to seven if I'm lucky. Um, it's just a sprint, right? And <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to survive right now. But yeah, this, this whole like microdosing cycle has been more about accepting parts of my life that I was maybe judging about myself. And one thing from playing this game, which is basically FIFA, 
it's called Dream League. It's like a mobile soccer game. And <laughs> I I thought it was interesting because I had my game set and my team set at um defensive or moderate. And I remember thinking, damn, like I need to score more goals. Why isn't my team more attack focused? And then I was thinking like how this applies like in real life. Like if you're not a CEO, but you're dialed in as an employee and you're thinking on the level of an employee, then of course you're not a CEO if you wanted to be CEO, right? Of course you're not a CEO. You're not acting like a CEO does. So then I was sitting there in the game and I was like, oh, if I switch my, my team to offensive, they will be more offensive and we will score more goals. Therefore, we are more offensive. And I was like, oh, so the only way to change your reality is actually to do the thing. Like you have to switch your players to offensive and attack the goal. You have to do that to be labeled as an offensive team, right? No, like, uh, whatever. Like, if you're a commentator and you're like, oh, Chelsea's only had one shot this whole half. They're not an offensive team. And then Chelsea comes and says, yes, we are. It's like, well, no, you're not. You only had one shot on target. You know, an offensive team is a team that is offensive and takes a lot of chances and scores and shoots, you know? And I was like, damn, that's just like hitting goals. You know, like, if you want to set, if you want to, like, hit goals and, and whatever, then you actually have to do that. You have to set the goals and actually do the steps that are geared toward that. You know, if you want to be a CEO, you need to act like a CEO and do the things that CEOs do. Because if you're not doing the things CEOs do, how the hell are you going to be a CEO? You know, and like, that's one of those things that like, I've always known, but I, I heard it put in a way where I was just like, damn. Or I, or I thought about it in a way where I was just like, damn, you know, that's that's so true. Like you, you have to, it's not that you're faking it, but like to become it, you have to become it. You know, you're not just it one day. You become it over a long period of time. Like no one wakes up tomorrow and is a CEO. It's a learning process. You become, you're a beginner CEO, you get better, you're a CEO. And then you're like, oh, I have all these other responsibilities and blah, blah, blah. But like you learn it as you go. And no one just wakes up one day and is a CEO. You earn that, you know? And if you're, if you're a YouTuber and people are like, how the hell are you so good at speaking on camera? Chances are, dude, chances are they've been making videos for a long time and they're preparing for this for a long time. You know, it's like when you hire a plumber and you're like, why the hell is it $400 for you to spend 10 minutes on my toilet? It's like, well, I spent $20,000 getting my certificate or whatever it is to get it. I spent two years on a, on a apprenticeship. You know, I spent a lot of my time. I give up a lot of my hours um, to do this service to become the plumber, which you didn't do, which is why you called me. And that's, therefore, I can charge this much money. Therefore, I am this. And I thought that was really interesting. And um, yeah, it's, it's very, very true. And something that is really important that I remember because I'm like falling into these rhythms of since I don't have a schedule and I have to create it and I'm not good with organization. I've never, I've really always been really bad with organization. I need some, I need some kind of structure. That's why I liked college because college gave me structure. I don't have that right now. So I'm really excited in the future to have an assistant who can give me structure and I don't have to wake up and literally have no idea what's going on in my future because every time I try and do one of those things like, oh, just set up a list and like knock out each bullet point. It's like, it just never works. Like I've tried it for so many times to like do that and it's just not the way I can operate. And so I don't know what it is. I don't know if I need to figure it out and keep trying or hire an assistant, but like I'm so close guys to being able to hire out an editor. If I have an editor, I get a lot more energy into doing other things because currently like I just filmed four videos my brain's mush right I'm gonna be able to at most edit one maybe two videos tonight and that's gonna take up the remainder of my creativity and energy and will to live right and so if I don't have to do that and I can film four videos back to back to back and send them off to my dude and say hey you know it only takes 30 minutes probably for an editor to put those videos together each and like yo here's the videos here they are. I'm posting one video a day. So just get them back in whatever order. If that's how it is, that's super chill. And I'm really excited for that. And just to have that time back because it's not fun editing. It's not like, oh, I'm putting together these cool fun montages and stuff. Like I don't have time to do that kind of editing. I can't focus on creative projects when I'm having to edit for five to seven hours a day. Um, I'm struggling to find time to draw on my iPad, to do my NFT stuff, to work on my project, to work on my brand. That's not just making YouTube videos. And so I just want to get to a point where I have a little bit more free time. And so delegating is going to be the way to go for that. But for that, I need money. And I also need a car. And I also need to move out. And there's all these things that are up in the air. And like, I want to travel these places, but it's expensive to travel. And it's just like, fuck me. Like, there's so much shit going. And, and I'm at this point in my life where like, I'm so close to moving out. I'm so close to all these things that it feels just like last May. And it's crazy because this timing is lining up. Like, this is about the time when I started to make moves. This is when I launched my podcast. Like, this, it's funny that this is January 26th. This is probably around the exact time when I started my first episode of my podcast. And I said, here we go. Time to start making my life something. I don't know. It started there. A few months later, it turned into the series of traveling and living in my car. And then I went. 
you know and in the in the march april may whenever i left in that air in that area i um i had a decision to make i was like do i wait till september to leave or do i just fucking leave now like screw it you know at that point i had income from my serving job but as soon as i left i lost my income and i was you know surviving on a, a bank account that i had some thousands of dollars in and this time i have consistent income and way more stability than i did before and way more money just in general like my net worth is more than it was back then and i'm like why would I continue to live at this house when I'm, I need to move out? <laughs> I need to move out for my own mental health and like get my own place and get started and just like get the ball rolling. Why am I waiting? I have, I'm good to go. I'm good. You know, I, I, I've done this before. I can do this. And so that experience from last year where I said, fuck it, you know, for me now, it's like, oh, uh, no problem. I'll go if I have to, like, whatever. I guess right now, like, I don't have any reason to leave. Like, there's no rush, but it's one of those things that, like my mental health is like, yo, hurry the fuck up. Like, I'm I'm so confident that right now it's my situation, my place I'm in in life that's making me feel like shit so many times. Um, and like, honestly, these past two months has been really great, you know, great moments. Um, and, you know, I would even argue most of the time it is good. But there's also this level of like, discontentment because i'm not living on my own i'm not fully financially free but i'm on this path that's so close and i can taste it and i think i'm just getting like so impatient it's like you know it's like someone dangling a french fry on your tongue and you're just like i want to eat it you know what i mean like that's what it feels like to me it's been like that for the past three four months i've been doing youtube and i'm like this is it i'm gonna make it and then i forget that like i'm not doing the shilly approach it's gonna take me a little bit longer um but that's okay you know and oh <sighs> Wow, I need to do this episode. This I've been putting this one off for a couple of weeks. I wanted to make this like once a month, but I think I'm just going to start doing these whenever I need to and just make them shorter if I need to. Um, let's answer a couple of the AMA questions that I had in here. What are your guilty pleasures? <laughs> so one of the questions here is what are my guilty pleasures? I've actually talked about one of these is the Twilight series, the fucking vampire, the cheesy vampire trilogy that everyone hates. I loved it. I also like my guilty pleasures is that vibe, the, the Twilight Zone, dark, gloomy, clouds, fog, like p like basically Pacific Northwest, Washington State, like all those things you see out there. That's like my vibe. That's what I love. That's like my favorite environment, climate, everything. And so my guilty pleasures, like, it's like especially tiktoks with that with that kind of video is usually like kind of sad gloomy music if that makes sense and so my guilty pleasure in in some sense is like uh well this is i guess this isn't like funny because there are some people who like struggle with this in in real life and it's very real and scary but people say who um think they deserve like in a an abusive relationship they think they deserve to be punished kind of thing i think in some ways i can um, understand that I, it's not so much I, I want to punish myself, but I, I don't know. Actually, you know what? I, I guess it does in some ways sometimes feel like I deserve to be like, I guess, punished. Uh, punish is like the right word. It's just not the right. Like when I think of punish, I think of like getting beaten up like with this. And that's not what I mean. Like sometimes I'll, I'll think of the worst case scenario and like hope it happens to me almost, you know? And I think it's coming from this idea of like movies that I used to watch. Like I was a huge superhero fanatic when I was a kid. Like I loved the hero story. I loved being the hero and part of the hero's journey is going through something truly horrible, you know? And I, you know, a couple of years ago, I noticed in my family that we weren't as close as I may have liked. And I was like, you know what it is? Like, I don't, I think it's cause we haven't like dealt with anything bad. Like we've never had anything that brought our family together for any kind of reason. And I have yet to have that. And I hate saying that shit, knock on wood, but like I haven't had anything that just completely wrecked me, you know, up until this point. And I think that it's like romanticizing my head. Okay, that's not true. I have had a couple experiences that that brought me to my knees, but um, it's like I craved it. it. It was like I wanted it to happen so that I could climb out of it and save myself and be the hero. And I think in my head, I have to go through that or something or I want to go through it and this kind of bothers me because it's almost that I look for it like I almost look to get punished or I like find ways where I could take it a different way to feel bad about myself and then overthink it and that's like a huge problem in, in relationships in general with people that you're friends with or you're talking to or family anyone you know and it's just something I noticed recently that I guess it bothers me because um, I've never really understood that 
before when people say, I feel like I deserve to be punished or deserve to be beaten because as a kid I was abused or something. And I've always, I wasn't abused as a kid. So I never thought that as like a thing, but the more I kind of like psychoanalyze myself, I'm like, fuck some part of me, like romanticized the idea as a kid of getting beaten to the fucking ground emotionally or physically and then rising from the ashes. It's like, I love that idea of the hero and being that person and being the savior, I guess, is like the romance in my head that I want the fantasy I live out in my head every day. And like, you know, I'm one of those kids that's been a dreamer my whole life. I always daydream. I always do that. And part of that is I've always wanted to be the grand hero, the, the winner, the one everyone loves. And it's like some kind of fairy tale thing. Oh, well, that kind of got deeper than I thought I was going to. The question was literally, what are your guilty pleasures? <laughs> uh, I have my, one of my, what's my favorite NFT art piece? So the ones you're seeing behind me, this one, Rainbow Mo shows Happy Sad. We have Naked Noodle Girl, and we also have that it's a oil painting i think it's called the night sky or the starry night um those are the three art pieces that i have like in real life that they sent me um but this picture i'll post up right now i'll just this is one that's very recent it's called imposter syndrome spoke to me because i've dealt with imposter syndrome my entire life um literally up until this year when i started to become more confident in my ability and confident in what i know and stuff like that so that piece means a lot to me it's also a beautiful fucking art piece on its own I'm a huge art collector, so yeah. We have this question. It's actually come up a few times now. Is your self belief in yourself or self confidence fake? Like, do you fake any of it? And the answer to that question is no. I guess the way I could describe it is that it's like in this TikToks where it's like your ego and then your higher self. It's like my higher self knows all these things and knows that I believe in myself and is confident and is like the stern voice that's saying, hey, you're fine. And then we have my ego that's saying, well, what if it's not? Like, what if everything goes wrong? What if you're this? What if you're that? And it's a constant battle. And so, no, I don't think my self-belief is fake. I think it's very real. Uh, and a, a huge part of me believes in myself. But then there are also another part of me that has absolutely no faith in myself in the slightest and is ready for everything to come crashing out and is waiting for it in fact and so i think that there's it's like a yin and yang like everything in your body is like uh what's that called like a you know what i'm talking about like a seesaw you know and sometimes it's this way sometimes it's heavy, it's heavy this way that's kind of how i think about it i think self-belief confidence is something you build over time and you get more of as you grow but it's also one of those things that can come crashing down at the you know one bit of bad news can crash all that down you could be so confident and then your wife cheats on you and you find out you're they've been cheating on each other you've been cheating and then you find out she's been cheating for 10 years and you're like, wait, you question everything. You know, like one thing can change everything for you. How tall am I? I'm 5'8". And this will be the last question I do. It's what's one vision of the future that you pray comes true? What's one thing you've imagined that you hope comes true? And honestly, the, the truest answer I can give is like finding like transcendental love that has always been like my main like objective in life like that's like the ultimate fantasy that you find like your life partner and everything's peachy and, and whatever like that's that is my ultimate goal it is mainly just finding someone who's worth it who also puts in as much work as i do into a relationship and makes me feel special and makes me feel wanted every day and i don't have to doubt myself so finding someone who 
is that and then not fucking leaving me or cheating on me would be probably the best thing ever that'd be lit i'd be happy with with just that honestly because if you've ever been in a relationship where you got where it was good and healthy you know what i'm talking about when you when i say like being in a really good relationship is literally the best thing ever it's literally the best thing ever and to have someone who supports you and is like pushing you and stuff like that it's very healthy and it's fucking awesome and that's hard to find nowadays especially because everyone's working on their own thing and it's really hard to do that you know and i say that from my own experience like it's hard for me to a lot of time to anyone i'm talking to because i just like don't have it and it's one of those things that i'm hoping that me becoming financially free i'm hoping by 25 and i think it'll definitely happen um is that i want to be able to enjoy things and have fun and take some pressure off my will to succeed with my ability to have fun in the moment a little bit more you know go and play a fucking rec soccer game or like go and just do nothing for a couple days and not worry about falling behind or you know not being scared to delegate and do those kind of things um I think I can do all those things. I just, I still, in my head, I'm like, why, why can't I do them now? And it's because, you know, genuinely, I just am not there yet. I, it's only been a few months, right? Like Gary Vee talks about this all the time. Like, I feel like I've been doing this forever, but it's only really been four minutes, four months when I zoom out. And you guys know how important zooming out is. Gary Vee talks about the time. He's like, look, unless you've been grinding on the thing you're talking about specifically for already two years, do not complain. He says that. And it's true. You know, and if I don't judge myself for two years, Bro, by the time two years passes by, I guarantee I'll be at a million subscribers. Like, it has to happen. A million subscribers, I think it can happen in two years, right? And if I don't judge myself till then, my life's going to be a lot easier, right? Because here's the thing. Here's the reality of it. The reality is I'm getting two to 10 offers a day right now. The reality is my channel's growing at anywhere from 50 to 150 subs a day. The reality is I can gain 1,000 subscribers a week-ish or 1,000 subscribers a month-ish for a couple months and then it'll skyrocket, you know? And it's one of those things that's like, dude, as long as I don't just not fuck this up and do anything really dumb like stop uploading youtube videos then i'm done like i'm in i'm in like i just have to keep going and like do whatever i'm doing and it's not like in three months i'm gonna be stupider than i was i'm literally gonna be smarter and more capable and to have more i just need to have more faith that the future me will have it taken care of because i always do you know i always come through and like i just take care of it when it needs to be done and that's just the reality of it and sometimes i don't think i'll remember to do it later in the future i don't trust that i'll take care of it or i'm capable enough and it's so stupid to think about it's so stupid and uh pompous to think that your present self is gonna be smarter than your future self like no no you're not fam you're literally gonna be smarter that makes no sense you're gonna be even smarter you're gonna have more experience in your belt you're gonna have more surety in the future you're gonna have been working for all those times more and it's dumb to think that honestly but yeah that's uh that's pretty much all i have there um yeah, shit. Uh, if, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it if you're... <coughs> <coughs> yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this podcast. Um, if you're still watching, I really appreciate it. This is one of those videos that you know, I make and don't expect really that many people to watch it. So I really appreciate it if you're here. I would love to know if you really watch this all the way to the end. Code word for this is going to be... Code word is going to be, I can choose to be grateful today. That'll be the, the code word because you can. It's true. That is something you can choose. You can choose to be grateful today while also having a shit day. You can also choose to be a little bit grateful for the things you have. If you're watching this YouTube video, chances are you're in a lot better of a place than 99% of the people on earth right now. Um, and yeah, man, uh, I appreciate you guys all watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already liked this video. If you want to see more of me right now, click on one of these boxes on the other side of me. And until next time, continue on your joyage. Continue to learn. And be grateful you're alive watching this video.